The world has embraced digital images with a passion. People are using cameras more than any time in history, and the explosion of images online is astounding. More than 350 million photos are uploaded to Facebook each day. That's more than 200,000 every minute, and Instagram receives almost 28,000 per minute. So making your images stand out is harder than ever, but most people just fire away on automatic. So giving some thought to the image you are trying to achieve and employing some creativity and some technical knowledge is key to making memorable images. Today I'll show you the equipment and settings you need to get creative by taking long exposure images. A long exposure involves slowing down your shutter speed, typically to longer than a fifteenth of a second. The goal here is to introduce creative blur or movement in the image. You need movement for a long exposure to work. Moving clouds, water, traffic, head and tail lights are all classic subjects for long exposures. You'll need a couple pieces of equipment. First and foremost is a tripod. Hand holding your camera at these slow shutter speeds is just not possible. Neutral density filters are necessary for daytime long exposures. But if you're just starting out, you can try long exposures in the evening so you can slow down your shutter without filters. I'll have a bit more on filters later. So what camera settings work best for long exposures? Well, taste and personal choice play a part, but the blur in your images are affected by three main factors. First of all, the speed of your moving subject. Secondly, the distance between your lens and the moving subject. And most importantly is your shutter speed. Because you're looking for long exposure times, you'll typically be setting your ISO to its lowest setting. That's usually 100 or 200, and you'll be stopping down your aperture to a small setting of at least f11 or higher. If you're unable to achieve the length of exposure you're looking for, it's time to look into neutral density filters. I'll briefly show you some of the most common filters that I use in my photography, and I'll also show some low-cost options to get you started. Screw-on filters like this are the cheapest and easiest to get started and a graduated neutral density filter like this can selectively darken the sky that'll even out the difference in brightness between your foreground and sky. Filter holders that can take several filters like this one are generally a better option than screw-on filters and with graduated filters you can line it up with uh, the horizon which is difficult with a screw-on filter. To get started with long exposures, there are a number of low-cost filter options on eBay and Amazon, like this Koken P-type filter holder, which is under $20, as is the filter. These are great for crop sensor cameras, while this Lee-type filter holder works great for full-frame cameras. For very long exposures in daylight, a dark 10-stop neutral density filter is key. These are great, but they're generally quite expensive, with brands like Lee and Hoya costing hundreds of dollars. This is a very dark 10-stop filter by Haida, which was under $100 and is quite high quality. I find high-tech and Haida filters to be the right compromise between cost and quality for my needs. I hope this has given you some ideas, inspiration, and equipment options to get creative with your images by using long exposures. I'm Darren Breckles. Thanks for watching.